The purpose of this video learning module is to provide a general overview of LiDAR and its potential uses. LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. LiDAR is the same general principle as radar, with the exception that it uses laser instead of radio waves. It collects data allowing for detailed representations of the Earth's surface and produces various data products including point-based digital terrain models, or DTM, grid-based digital elevation models, DEM, or digital surface models, DSM, and contours. In addition to these end-user products, LiDAR processing generates other data resources, including the raw point cloud, processed points, and break lines. These products require more technical knowledge and computing horsepower to use effectively. LiDAR is an active sensor that allows for day or night operation. Nighttime operation is often preferable due to better weather conditions such as less wind and clouds and lack of other air traffic. The laser will not penetrate clouds. Laser energy is absorbed by water at this wavelength because it's near the infrared region. This slide illustrates the laser scanner and the movements the laser scanner must make to collect data. Data collection in the field is time consuming and costly since equipment and staff must be moved throughout the study area. LiDAR is effective for collecting terrain information more rapidly than existing data collection techniques. LiDAR is also a more efficient way to map large areas of terrain. Each laser pulse can hit objects at multiple levels, allowing several sets of valuable data to be captured. The pulse can capture a first return from the leaves of the tree canopy, a second return of branches, with a last bare earth return. The upper image is derived from the first return hits of the tree canopy that provide forestry and vegetation information. The lower image is derived from bare earth last returns for ground surface information. The returns can be visualized based on the data collected. Simple display based on the returns attributes show numerous assessment and analysis possibilities. Here returns are colored by return classification. An example of classification is the separation of the points into vegetation, building, or ground classes. Each of these groups implies the knowledge of its nature. The picture shown is Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. This is not a black and white aerial photograph, but the return data colored by intensity. Each type of surface returns the signal to the sensor at a different intensity, providing information for processing classifications and display. Flight line data can provide valuable reference information about what is behind the data and how it was collected. This slide illustrates the different elevations. This is Commonwealth Stadium again in Lexington. The higher elevations of the stadium are red. Potential LiDAR uses include floodplain mapping. LiDAR data supports higher quality floodplain model and accurate extents of the floodplain. Initial site assessments can be done without the need to send survey crews into the field in transportation and development planning. LiDAR provides a practical alternative to traditional study methods for large-scale location and relocation studies. LiDAR creates a robust data set for volume calculations, slope analysis, and runoff surface modeling for feasibility studies and environmental impact studies where traditional survey methods can be slow and result in lower sampling. LiDAR can acquire millions of points within each square mile. This is vegetation from a LiDAR point cloud. Classified vegetation clearly illustrates the shape, density, and height of vegetation and can be used to monitor changes in vegetation density, encroachments, and impacts to the environment. LiDAR can be used to analyze soil movements for transportation work, landslide analysis, earthquakes, and coastal erosion. Also, a tool was recently developed by researchers at Oregon State University that will allow highway field engineers to analyze soil samples in the field instead of taking the data to the office for analysis. Many of the uses of LiDAR are common endeavors here in Kentucky. Examples are shown on the slide. The point cloud is the first data product of LiDAR processes. It contains the spatial coordinates of each point as well as intensity and other collection elements. The combination of 3D spatial and spectral information contained in the data set allows great flexibility to perform manipulations to extract the required information. Various types of LiDAR software exist, allowing from the simplest visualization operations of zoom, rotate, and navigate to more advanced processing capabilities. Contours have been the primary means of visual display of elevation data in the past. The high point density and high accuracy of LiDAR provide enough information for small contour intervals if needed. However, the processing of contours from LiDAR can be data intensive. Computers have allowed other elevation formats such as triangulated irregular networks or TINs and digital elevation models or DEMs to gain popularity. 
A digital elevation model, or DEM, can be represented as raster data or a grid of squares, each with an elevation value associated with it, that represents a surface. They are used quite often in GIS and CAD programs and are the most common basis for digitally produced relief maps. DEM resolution is dependent on the grid cell size. Smaller cell size will give you a higher resolution, but it will produce a larger file and require more processing power. Triangulated irregular networks, or TINs, are widely used in various GIS and CAD software to model terrain surfaces. TINs are a form of vector-based digital geographic data and are constructed by triangulating a set of vertices or points. The vertices are connected with a series of edges to form a network of triangles. This is a TIN of Wolf Creek Dam. This slide illustrates some of the products and applications for LiDAR. LiDAR is used for risk map products to develop depth grids and the probability of flooding during a 30-year mortgage. These images illustrate LiDAR combined with imagery for inundation zones and LiDAR combined with sonar points for dam volume capacity. A special thank you to PhotoScience Incorporated for assistance with the LiDAR learning module. For more information, please consult the resources shown. This concludes our learning module on the potential uses of LiDAR.